Hello and welcome. My name is Amanda and this is my channel, Her Pacific Northwest Washington Life. And today we are kicking off the week 21 vlog. So today is a little bittersweet because this is the week and part of next week that I was supposed to be in Scotland. And if you watched my vlog from last week, I had mentioned that I thought it would be kind of fun um, each day to tell you what I should have been doing in Scotland so I could kind of still live my trip that way. So today um, we would have landed in Edinburgh at 10.40 a.m. local time. So would have had that fun jet laggy feeling, getting through customs and all those other good things, um, getting another stamp on the passport. And then I think the plan would have been to probably stretch our legs a little bit um, just because the flight from SeaTac to London Heathrow is pretty long. Uh, it's short from London Heathrow to, to Edinburgh, but just being on the plane for that amount of time um, definitely wouldn't want to get on a train right away. So we probably would have walked around a little bit and just popped into a couple shops, probably get lunch. And then the plan was to get on the train to Inverness, which I've heard is one of the most beautiful train rides in Scotland. And knowing that Scotland itself is just completely beautiful, like I am so excited for this train ride. Um, I was a little nervous though because I fall asleep on moving vehicles. Like I never grew out of that. I'm just like a baby. You put me in a moving car. I'm out. <laughs> so I was nervous that um, after such a long plane ride and the jet lag and not sleeping, that I would miss a lot of the scenery on the train ride. Um, so I don't know what the solution will be when we go next year, um, other than like taping my eyelids open. But uh, then I think it's about a three and a half to a four or four and a half hour train ride, depending on which one you get and how many stops. Um, it's right around, at least for right now, it's right around like 50 pounds for that. So we would have um, stopped in Inverness, uh, which is where we are planning or we're planning to stay for a couple nights. And then I think when we got in Inverness, um, obviously first stop would be to find our Airbnb, which uh, was pretty close to the river, I want to say. Um, and it was by a castle as well. <laughs> That's all I really remember. Um, and then after, like I always like to shower and freshen up after a plane ride. So I probably would have taken a shower as soon as we got to the Airbnb and got into new clothes and all that stuff. And then we probably would have found a nice little restaurant or a pub to have some dinner. And that would have been the end of day one um, with going to bed probably by like 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night. Um, so just a day of travel, a little bit of sightseeing, not a whole lot, but... Um, kind of squeeze it in every little chance you get. So today's actual day is going to be um, quite different. Uh, not traveling around, probably not leaving the house. I have in a little less than an hour my first of four sessions to get back into school and it's an hour long session. And then after that, um, I think there's two videos I wanna film today and hopefully edit and um, schedule them as well. I also want to take the dogs for a bath. I've got dishes to do. I'm doing laundry right now. And um, I have a craft drawer in my office I would like to go through, but I'm not entirely sure I'll have the time to do that today. So whatever I do, um, I'm definitely going to be listening to my audiobook for the day, um, most of the day with whatever I do since it's going to be tasks I don't have to think a lot about. I have one book to carry over from last week which is Gathering Darkness by Morgan Rhodes. I read probably another like 40 or 50 pages last night so I am right around page 150 right now um, so almost halfway through and then I started listening to I think it's Rapture by Lauren Kate, which is the next book in the Falling, not the Falling Kingdoms, the Falling series. 
fall in, not falling. <laughs> and I'm almost 40 minutes into that. So those are the books I've got going at the beginning of this week. And once I'm a little further into at least um, Rapture, I'll let you know what's going on and things like that. So I'm going to wrap up this little clip right here and we'll check in with you here soon. I am almost halfway through Rapture now and I'm liking it a lot more than I liked Passion. Um, I just felt like Passion was just so out of character for the characters, I guess. So, Rapture's better, for sure. Um, the group is back in, like, present time, and uh, they are trying to find these three artifacts, which, if they're brought together, will stop Lucifer from um, making, like, basically, like, doing over the, the falling of the angels and all that stuff. So, um, they found one so far and they're trying to find the second one now. So that's how that's going. Um, I haven't read any of Gathering Darkness today. I did film two videos, my Make Your Myth Taker, uh, TBR, as well as my June planner setup. And I just got... Well, not just, um, the mail came like three hours ago, but I got my pre-order of some washi tapes from Bloomsicle Paper Co. And I think now I'm going to do my knowledge check for the session I attended this morning. Um, but I'll show you the washi tapes first. I just got to move my planner out of the way. So there is this set of three, which is kind of like a... Let me go let the dog out really fast. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, um, there's the set of three glitter washi tapes that's, I think it's an autumn vibe. For me, it could either be autumn or spring, but it's got, the actual washi tape is textured with glitter, but it's different than the last time she did glitter, which she said it would be. Um, so as a comparison, this is what the original glitter looked like. You're probably not going to see the texture very well. And this is just a lot more smooth. I feel like the color saturation isn't quite there like it was with the other stuff. But maybe this is intentional. Um, but it's this just these really pretty florals and cute like woodland critters and things. Focus. There we go. So that's really pretty. Um, these are also a lot bigger. I have used this roll, but you can still see that it is a lot bigger than the original roll. Or this, the second roll is bigger than what they were originally. There, that's maybe better. So that means this isn't going to fit in my storage container <laughs> as well as um, the other ones did. And the other ones were big too. I also got this set, I don't know what it's called, um, but this one has gold foil on it, and it's just kind of like a celestial one. There's uh, like a 20 or 25 millimeter, I don't know washi sizes, I don't know why I'm trying to say this. Um, this one's probably a 15 millimeter. This one is a 10. This is probably an eight. And this one is a five, I'm pretty sure. So that's that for washi. Um, like I said, I'm gonna take my knowledge test thingy now. Um, I, they, I'm not sure what to expect with this because you have to get an 80%. Um, it is a pass or fail thing. Um, you can redo the session and then get another link for the knowledge test. And I just said, like, be sure to pay attention because um, you're tested on what the session is. But the session was a lot of, of questions about, like, 
how do you keep motivated and what does this look like for you and are you this type of a thinker or that type of a thinker so there wasn't a lot on like the PowerPoint slides they were sharing so I will definitely be referencing the um, pre-work that they had sent out it's multiple choice but it just sounds like it's this intense like check test thing and I know it I know it's multiple choice I don't know how many questions it is though so I'm gonna get that done um, and they said no news is good news so if I don't hear from them then I pass but I don't know how long they before they would let you know if you didn't pass like if it's a next day thing an automatic thing if it's a two days from now thing so um, I guess wish me luck <laughs> we'll see how I do but I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then I'm going to eat dinner and sit my butt on the couch. I do have a reading update for you all, but first I wanted to share with you what I would have been doing in Scotland today. Um, today was a full day Outlander tour. I had booked this through Highland Tours in Verness, I think is their full name, and this was the Outlander tour. This is a private tour company. Um, I know our guide's name is Dougie. I think it's Dougie McLeod. Yes. Um, and obviously I can't like give a review of how that went since I haven't gone on a tour with him before, but I can tell you that my interaction with him through email has been nothing but professional. Um, he's been so great at answering all my questions and just very responsive um, when I reached out to him I had actually beat him to the punch on canceling uh, he was going to within the next couple of days um, let me know that he was going to have to cancel tours so the reason we went with this tour is because Outlander tours can be dang expensive depending on um, where you leave from, what all is included with the tour, how many people. This is one that I found that rather than being priced per person, it was priced per group because Dougie, I assume, has a car that can probably seat um, four people. Uh, so, and since it's one person doing it, he is booked out for the entire day. So it's a flat rate. Um, this one for up to four people was 250 pounds, which equaled out to about $315.72. So per person cost with the three of us, it was $105.24. So I feel like that's really not bad for um, a full day tour with a guide taking you to multiple different locations and explaining the history and answering questions and all that stuff. So this was supposed to leave from our hotel. He does pick up in Inverness. Um, I think technically our Airbnb was in Highland, which is in the Inverness area. I think one, one side of the river is Inverness and one side is Highland, but I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. Um, but this basically is a tour that runs from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and you start out at the uh, on Church Street in Inverness at the old high church. Um, and then going on from there is the Culloden Battlefield, which is like five miles away from Inverness. Uh, things to know is there is an entrance fee for the Culloden Exhibit and an entrance fee for the Culloden Moor. Um, you can also see the Fraser Stone, some Clava Cairns, and the Clutie Well. Uh, the next stop was the, oh golly, I'm going to butcher these names because I haven't been taught how to say them, um, but it's the Strathfeffer, uh, which has the Eagle Stone and Castle Leod, which I believe was um, Castle Leoch in the Outlander films, or not films, the um, TV show. And then moving on from there, you go to Bewley, which has a priory. Um, it's been a while since I've looked up all of these, so I can't exactly remember what they are, but I will link the website down in the description box below. So if you care to look at what these things I'm talking about are, um, you can go and check that out. Uh, and then the next stop is Lally Rock, which um, obviously there isn't an actual building there that is the house uh but it's basically the 
grounds that Lallybach was based off of. And then you have Stroy, which has the Fraser Levitt lands, um, the es Eskadale Church, and the Wardlaw Mausoleum. So a day just completely packed in with all things Outlander up in the Inverness area. Um, obviously, it was really looking forward to it, especially having just finished the last published book in the Outlander series, written in my own heart's blood. Um, I guess the one thing that I am glad about the silver lining for today is that this now gives me the opportunity to watch um, because I haven't watched any of the Outlander series. So this gives me the time to watch the show so that way when I actually visit these places I can get a better sense of um, not only their historical importance but the places that were used in the filming of Outlander, I can kind of get a bigger picture of um, those places, which I think will be really cool and interesting. So yeah, uh, I am 100% rebooking that when we go next year um, with Dougie because Price, obviously, um, it had everything we wanted to see and just his customer service was has been outstanding. So I fully expect that um, when we're able to go that his like in-person customer service is just going to be phenomenal as well. So really looking forward to that. Um, I think he does other tours other than Outlander, but like I said, it'll be on his website. So I'm going to link the Outlander tour specifically, but you can um, go search other things if you would like to. Um, so yeah, basically um, we probably would have we probably last night would have gotten some breakfast things for the morning um, just because we are staying at Airbnbs. We're not staying at any hotels or anything. Um, so breakfast won't be provided. Uh, when I went to Scotland, not when I went to Ireland a couple years ago, I did bring instant oatmeal. So I think I probably would do that as well just for those mornings when you need something really quick and out the door. Um, not sure what lunch would have been, uh, and then other than that, um, we probably would have found a nice restaurant to eat at, uh, tonight and enjoyed traditional Scottish meal. Maybe. Um, I know one of my girlfriends is, it's gonna take some convincing to get her to try haggis, <laughs> but she might do it. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so reading update. I... I think I told you last night that I am like already halfway through Rapture and that's going well. Um, I didn't listen to much more of that after I ended that last clip so I don't have an update for that but I read um, quite a bit in Gathering Darkness last night so I think I'm almost at page 250 which means I have like 150 pages left in this book. And things are starting to ramp up more. Um, I remember when I started the book that I was telling you that I couldn't remember if they had started searching for the kindred in Gathering Darkness, but I thought they might have at the end. And I can confirm that they have started searching for those. So i um, really excited to kind of have more of an adventure sort of thing pop up. Um, this book, these books do follow multiple points of view, so each chapter is a new character, and there's definitely characters I like following, or whose chapters I like more than others. I really like, um, Cleo and Magnus's chapters, and, um, I used to like Jonas, now I'm kind of eh about him, and a new point of view we're getting is Nick, uh, who is Cleo's best friend, and I do like Nick, I think it's interesting to see kind of things from his point of view. Um, the people I don't like following, and from the start I've never really liked following Lucia, and I don't really care for Lysandra, and now I kind of don't really care for Alexius either. So I'm kind of like split in the middle of what chapters I do and don't like, um, or that I am excited to read through versus I'm not. Uh, typically if like I'm ready for bed and I get to the end of a chapter and see that the next chapter is from a point of view I like. I'll typically read that <laughs> and then go to bed. 
Um, whereas if I see it's from a point of view that I'm not so keen on, then I, I do call it a night at that point. But this is going really well so far. Um, I'd like to have this book finished probably by tomorrow night, but we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, and then I think probably by tomorrow I'll also have Rapture finished as well, depending on how much I can get listened to today. So as far as today goes, um, I have another session to get back into school tonight. It is at 5.30 my time and it's for an hour long. Um, I did do the knowledge check last night of session one and it wasn't at all what I was expecting so I'm glad I got that done because now I know what I need to look for in this next session and what notes I need to take for passing the knowledge check too. So, um, and I did find out that it's three to five days until you find out if you basically didn't pass. So uh, hopefully I don't get an email in three to five days. We'll see though. I have another reading update, but first I wanted to tell you, um, as we've been doing, starting off each day with what I would be doing in Scotland right now. So today was going to be a road trip. Um, we would still be in Inverness today. It would be our last night in Inverness. And the plan for today was to rent a car. Uh, I've never driven on the opposite side of the car or the opposite side of the road. So uh, my friend Ronnie and I were going to switch off. Um, and Bailey and I would have been the the keepers of the map. Um, so today we were going to wake up super, super early and journey over to the Isle of Skye, which is some place that I have wanted to visit for so long and uh, didn't obviously get the chance when I went my first time a couple years ago. So um, I did print off like um, Google Maps route. Um, this shows it's a two hour and 40 ish minute drive, but from everything I've been reading, um, a lot of it is country roads. So it is slightly slower speed limits and it looks like it's about like a three hour drive versus a two hour and 40 minute drive. So there were two different routes. Um, I thought it would be kind of cool to do one route on the way there and another route on the way back. So this is the map I had printed for the drive there. And then this one on the way back. So one goes a little south and the other goes a little north. I'm not sure if that's what we're going to end up doing or not, but um, I just thought it would give us some more of an opportunity to see Scotland if we could take two different kind of highways. The plan was to stop at the, I don't know if this would have been the first plan or the second because everything I'm reading, um, it seems like there's a couple key locations on Sky that you want to get there super early in the morning to beat the crowds. So I don't know if we would have visited the Eileen Donan Castle at the start of our journey or at the end, but it is really close. I think it's like a 30 minute drive from the bridge over into Skye. But basically I had this little map um, with different locations and places to visit. So I'll put it up so you can see what I'm talking about as I'm talking about things. And I'm not entirely sure which route we would have taken, um, whether we would have gone for the three, four, five spots before we did like the zero, um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's the Trotinish, Totternish uh, loop. I don't know what the name of it is. I have, I've keep reading it, but I don't, I'm not committing it to memory or anything. But basically, zero first stop is like the main major city on Sky, which is Portree. And that's basically where you have to start off. Um, so if we went south first, um, the places we would see are the Talisker Distillery, which is a whiskey distillery. And Ronnie and I did a whiskey distillery tour in Ireland um, back in 2014. 
So I don't know that either of us necessarily need to go through the tour again or go through a tour again, but it would be cool to stop by and maybe pick up um, a bottle of whiskey for the remainder of our trip um, because Scotland does have a zero tolerance um, policy for drinking and driving. So if you have even the faintest hit of alcohol on your breath, uh, you're in big trouble. So we obviously, because we are driving, we can't just, you know, have a drink of whiskey and then go on our merry way. Um, I, I'm sure we would be fine, but just in case, I wouldn't really want uh, our trip to end up that way. So um, there's the distillery. Uh, number four is the fairy pools, which are just absolutely beautiful. And you see all over the internet um, on like Instagram and Pinterest and stuff. And then, oh boy, I'm going to butcher this. Um, number five is the Slagchen <sighs> Old Bridge, um, which... I don't remember the significance of this, but it's also just one of those really famous, like, picturesque bridges and things like that. So then going to the actual loop, um, the first stop, which we would probably go the route of going to the right and around and back down. Um, so the first stop is the Old Man of Store, and I know there is a car park Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just go car park. I've been reading a lot of blogs and stuff. Um, there's a parking area where you can pull off and see these basalt pillars um, from the car park area. Though I think I would really like to hike this. I think it's about like an hour and 45 minute round trip. Um, it's not a loop, so you go up and down on the same path but I think it would be really cool to be able to get up close to them and just see them um this is supposed to be one of those like super tourist heavy pieces but um the hike is supposed to be really gorgeous uh number seven I think there's a falls in between six and seven or between seven and eight I don't remember though but number seven is the Kilt Rock and Melt Falls um, which is something quick pull over. I think it's like a 15 minute walk into the viewing platform and stuff. So, um, another just super iconic picture. Um, number eight, I believe is a castle and I don't think you have to go all the way to the point. I think you, there is a road that would connect seven and nine. And I believe in between that road is the, um, why oh it's not uh <laughs> it's quadring quick oof i don't remember what this is again it's a it's a word i haven't committed to memory because i haven't written it down yet but just this like gorgeous walk um a lot of it you can like you can get a really good view of the scenery if you just go like 15 minutes and on the trail i think it's a 4.5 mile round trip um, loop or like a there and a back. Uh, so it can take a bit of time, but just like rolling plains and you can see hills and like mountains and things like that is supposed to just be absolutely gorgeous. So I think that's a stop we're going to add. And then I don't remember what nine is. It wasn't something that really interested me, but number 10 is the fairy Glen. So that is where you like look down into the little valley and you can see the stone circles and these little mounds and stuff, which is where the fairies live and all that. So um, that was going to be Sky. I don't know if that is something we can squeeze into in a day. Um, I don't know if we can do the, the loop as well as the little offshoot places. So I'll have to do a bit more research. Um, it seems like a lot of people spend one or two days or two or three days on Sky so that they can do the other loop, which takes you out to um, a castle and the lighthouse and stuff. So I'll have to look around and see what people are saying and look at drive times and all that other stuff um, and kind of really nail down 
Like, are we going to hike store? Are we going to do the quad quay something or other? I don't know. Like, how much time do we want to plan to spend? Um, and, like, the fairy circle and the fairy glen and stuff. Um, so we'll really have to narrow that down because six hours of our day is already going to be spent on driving. And knowing it's about like a two hour hike just for store, um, that's gonna take up quite a bit of time. So I'll have to figure that out. But I was really looking forward to this, obviously. I mean, I was really looking forward to this whole trip. <laughs> and um, I guess it's good because now I'll have more time to actually plan it out. Though I would have had the fine, finer details ironed out prior to going on this trip. Um, since we knew we were canceling, I didn't bother to iron out the finer details right now because I'm not sure if our timeline, like we'll probably still do a 12 day trip, um, which would actually give us like 10 days. Uh, and I don't know if we're going to do like Inverness, Dundee, Edinburgh, or if we're going to maybe start out in Dundee and then do Inverness and end in Edinburgh, or if we're going to do like less time in Edinburgh and less time in Dundee and more time in Inverness so that there's a potential that we could stay a night in Portree. So once we get closer to actually being able to like book our trip and stuff, we can get together and iron out those details then. So reading update. Um, last night I stayed up and finished the last 140 pages I had left in Gathering Darkness and it really picked up towards the end. Um, I was starting to remember a lot more of the details in this book once we got towards the end because things were just a little fuzzy. Um, it still drives me bonkers though that there's certain people who develop plans and um, immediately those plans are crushed. And it happens to the same characters repeatedly so it's just kind of like either don't let them have plans at all or like let them win for once because it's really annoying to see the, see the same formula over and over and over. Um, we get some new characters at the end of this book that will carry over into the next book and uh, other things like that. So I'm actually planning to pick up Frozen Tides tonight which is book four and this is the last reread I have and the last two books are going to be brand new for me. So it'll be nice to, I think I can probably have this series wrapped up um, by the end of July. My June is already looking a bit full, um, participating in the Make Your Myth Taker readathon and the books I already had planned to read. But if I can squeeze these in next month, I'm probably going to try to do that. And then the other book I finished was today I finished Rapture by Lauren Kate. Um, oh, I gave Gathering Darkness three stars, which is what I gave it the first time around. Um, so I finished Rapture, and I think it ended in a nice, neat little package. Um, lots of things were revealed towards the end. All the pieces fell into place and all that good stuff. Um, I did like this book more than I liked the third book right? Yeah, the third book. Second book? I didn't like the second book. Was it the third book I didn't like? I haven't really liked any of these books, but they're fun little reads. Um, I'm only giving this a two-star rating just because I don't think it's anything exceptional, but had I read it around the time when I initially picked it up, I might have liked it a lot more. Um, I just think I don't know. I just don't think it's that good. <laughs> but it's a fun little read. I have one book left to finish that series, which is Unforgiven, which I believe is from Daniel's point of view. And I'm not sure if it's going to be um, like one of the stories we've already read from his point of view or if it's going to be new stuff that we haven't seen before. Um, but my library and Scribd don't have it on audiobook, so I've got to hold in through my library for the ebook. So I probably won't get it before um, this month ends, but if I do, I think I can read it pretty quickly and round out that series, and then I will have three 
series finished for the finish-a-thon, which would be really awesome. It's a lot better already just where I am now than I did last year. So I'm glad to um, get to see a lot of progress made on those series that I've started and have ongoing, especially those series that are already complete and stuff. So um, the next book I'm going to pick up on audio is going to be the well of ascension which is book two in the mistborn series um but i don't know yet if i want to pick that up today or if i want to give myself a little bit of a break and kind of catch up on my youtube to watch videos um right now that's what i'm doing is the youtube to watch videos hey pretty girl is it your birthday are you too yeah in today's update of what would Amanda be doing in Scotland, um, the short and simple answer is it's mostly a travel day. We um, would have had our last night in Inverness last night, and today we would have had a bit of the morning. So I think the plan was to go visit um, Loch Ness and potentially do a boat tour, depending on what they had um and times available and things like that i do believe from where we were staying um we were right on the river ness so we would have had to probably get a bus into um one of the towns right on the actual lake that do the tours and things like that but i'm not 100 percent sure i haven't really looked at the area that well um, so that would have been the plan is just to do like a quick little boat tour or something like that and then get on the train from Inverness to Dundee. Um, for those of you that don't know, I work for a company that is headquartered out of Dundee, Scotland, and the driving factor behind this trip uh, was because I invited myself to a colleague's wedding that was supposed to happen on Saturday the 25th. And, um, obviously they had to postpone, uh, same reason I had to postpone my wedding and same reason why I had to postpone this trip. But, uh, we were going to spend a couple days in Dundee. So tonight would have been our first night in Dundee and we found an Airbnb that was right in like the center of town and stuff. Um, just a really quick walk from, um, like the train station and things like that. So lots of little shops and things around, lots of food and restaurant things. Um, I got a good feel, I think, of Dundee when I was there a couple of years ago, just because we were doing planning sessions at a hotel in the actual city, not, um, I think two days were at the office and then the other three days were um, in the city. So. I got a good little feel of it, I think, and it's a nice, nice little place to be. Apparently, it's like the most sunny place in Scotland or something like that. I don't know if that's real or what, um, but I know that a lot of my colleagues have very, very affectionate feelings towards the city itself. Um, the only other thing we were going to plan to do tonight was have um, tea or dinner with the bride and groom-to-be. It would have been my first time meeting my colleague in person who is the groom. And I was really looking forward to that, but um, we'll just have to wait till next year. So that's about it. Uh, like I said, not a lot going on. I probably just sort of been taking in the sights on the train and um, reading, settling in, you know, those sorts of things. Um, the two dinner options we had uh, by my colleague were Rama Thai and um, Tapas in this town right outside of um, Dundee called Brody Ferry. Uh, and I have had, I've had I've actually eaten at both of those places, so I was going to try and um, change his opinion on where we ate because I would like to have new experiences. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all the day was. So reading-wise, I 
who have started two new books. I have started Frozen Tides by Morgan Rhodes. I started this last night and I got to page 56. So not too far. Um, like I said, I think in my update yesterday, we do get a couple new character points of views from this and things are really starting to move and fall into place and happen. Um, so this is going to be, we, the first three books set up a lot of the world and the events that I think are going to take place in the last three books. Um, so I know there's some big things that happen in this one that I don't fully remember, but I do know there's things that happen. Um, so it'll be nice to have those pieces fall back into place again. And then beyond to the last two books. And then I also started listening to The Well of Ascension, which is book two, and then Miss Born series by Brandon Sanderson. I think I only got a chapter and a half in um, before I had to put it on hold for a little bit because um, I'm working in a spreadsheet today for work, but it's taking a bit more concentration than I can reasonably give um, and still be able to listen to an audiobook and understand what's going on. So unfortunately I'm not listening to that right now so I'm just catching up my on my to watch list but reading is going fairly well. I am very confident that I'll be able to finish both of those books before the end of the month. And I think I'll even be able to slip in another physical book as well. I feel like I am just killing it with physical books right now, honestly. Um, I haven't totaled up my page count, and I don't know if my page count's necessarily going to be very high, um, but I know from these Fallen Kingdom books alone, we're going to be over 800 pages, and then I've read two Gossip Girl books, which are around 200, 230 pages each, so um, my page count is already over a thousand, which is really good for me, I feel like, so excited to see where my stats are by the end of this month. Um, and then I can kind of pull together my stats for the, no, next month will be the first half of the year. Uh, so that'll be exciting to see by the end of the first half where I am with um, my reading and stuff. I'm so sorry. I always yawn whenever I turn on the camera and I think it's because um, I spend most of my day not talking and when I do talk I just use up so much of my breath that <laughs> I need to get more oxygen to my brain. Um, but yeah, there was something else I was going to say in regards to reading and now I don't recall what it was. Um, it probably wasn't important then if I can't remember. Uh, yeah, so we'll call it there. All right, so this is going to be a really quick check-in. Uh, just to start it off, what I would be doing in Scotland today is just exploring the town of Dundee. Um, like I said yesterday, this is where my company is headquartered, so I would have attempted to go into... We've got two separate office locations, um that are near each other. So I would have gone in and obviously seen my team that is in one of the locations and uh, just spent some time with them and went up the stairs to go see other people that I know and kind of work closely with, but also that I got to know a lot better when I was there a couple years ago. And then trekked down the road to the other location that I'm not entirely sure who is, like, what teams are at that location anymore. Um, a lot of the people that I knew last time I visited there, they have since moved on from the company. And by this time next year, who even knows <laughs> what the structure is going to look like and all that stuff. Um, other than that, it would have been just kind of a nice, uh, relaxing walk around. There's some cool things to see in Dundee, um, like you can see, I think it's the HMS Unicorn. Um, you can also see the V&A, and um, there's other things there, like I know there's a university in Dundee, which I think is where G at Book Rose went to school. Um, but yeah, lots of just exploring and things to do. And then probably would have been a night out with colleagues, uh, it being a Friday night <laughs> and 
they like to drink over there and it would have just been a good opportunity. We probably would have gone somewhere with food and then eventually moved on to other pubs and things like that. Um, so yeah, that would have been really fun. Um, was looking forward to just a night out with everybody, but, um, next time I go the night that I'll be there, uh, we'll be there for two nights. I think, um, looking at what I've kind of roughly mapped out. Um, but the night to do things, that's not going to be the wedding night will be a Thursday. So I don't know how many people are going to want to go out on Thursdays when they have to work then on Friday. But yeah, would have been just a nice relaxing, um, day somewhere I am familiar. Um, that's weird. They have the first six digits of my phone number. One sec. I seem to be getting calls a lot lately that my social security number has been, um, like used or, uh, like it's spam callers trying to get me to like give them my personal information um by telling me that there's something wrong with like my social security number and things like that like they said it would be suspended for fraudulent activity in texas don't think so but okay um anyway would have been a lovely night out um i have been reading i read maybe another 50 pages or so, uh, maybe a little more last night in Frozen Tides. That's still going well. I don't really have much of an update. Um, and then I managed to get through chapter two of Well of Ascension. I think I'm only in chapter three, so I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning before the boys get home tonight and get some more of that listened to. I need a day where I can just listen to like a solid chunk of it to get into the story because that's kind of what I need when I start out audiobooks. It's easier for me to do smaller chunks and like pause and things like that um, after I'm a little way through the story, but I feel like I really lose motivation if I don't have a good solid like hour or two to listen to an audiobook when I first start one. So I'm hoping to get quite a bit of time in on that. Um, and that's pretty much it for my reading. I never remembered what I was going to tell you yesterday, so that's out the window. But now is just uh, get stuff done before the boys get here, and we're going to have a relaxing evening tonight. I'm sure we've got some movies, and we'll let Maddie Boy, um, I think there's a Studio Ghibli movie that he wants to watch. We've got a couple left, um, and he asked that we do not watch any of those without him. So uh, I'm sure that's what he'll pick. So yeah, that's going to be it for right now. Um, I'm not going to have anything more exciting to tell you tonight. So I will check in tomorrow with um, whatever's going on. Today is wedding day, except it's not because unfortunately my friends had to postpone. Um, so it would have been a get ready day, explore a little bit of Dundee. So I was only invited to the reception because they um, have a lot of friends and family and they were already over packed, <laughs> I guess, on the ceremony. And there's just a little bit more space for guests for the reception. So I would have um, joined my colleagues that are on the production team with me um, in Perth, which is just a little bit west of Dundee this evening. I think the reception started at 7.30. And I know um, the guys, so it's all of my team over there is guys. <laughs> so it would have been um, a day with them. And most of them have wives or partners. Um, one of them was supposed to be my date because he's the only odd man out. And I know another one, um, true to his Scottish nature, really enjoys the social aspect of drinking and being at the pub and stuff. So he really wanted to like pregame for the wedding and start out in Perth at some 
pubs there before the wedding. So we probably, I don't know what time we would have planned to be in Perth with the reception starting at 7.30, but probably a good two hours beforehand. Um, I also know you can drink on trains in Scotland, so I'm sure there would have been some of that. <laughs> but yeah, um, we'll just have to wait till next year and do all that fun stuff. I know, um, I need to reach out to my, my friend's bride-to-be because I think she's a little sad, obviously, about not getting married today. They decided, um, Skylar and I decided that we were going to get married on our wedding date regardless, um, and we have just postponed our actual, like, celebration with friends and family until hopefully this, the, like, the tail end of this summer, but, um, my friend and his fiancé decided to not go that route themselves. They're just gonna hold the whole wedding until next year. So, I know she's bummed, um, because I think she's kind of one of those girls like me who was dreaming about their wedding, um, for a long, long time. So I'm gonna reach out to her and just make sure she's doing okay. I know a lot of people have been, but one extra person won't hurt. Um, yeah, we would have had a bit of this morning to explore more of Dundee. Um, my other colleague, well, one of my other colleagues, um, I've got a lot of colleagues, <laughs> um, offered to let me get ready at her house so that I didn't have to bring, like, a curling iron and, like, heat protectant spray and, you know, all that, like, an iron and all that other stuff. So, I think she was pretty keen on wanting to do my hair as well. Um, I mean, I've got a lot of hair, and if you don't have a lot of hair, it is fun to do someone's hair with a lot of hair, I assume. So, I think she would have um, been doing my hair, which is fine, because then I wouldn't have had to do it. And she's also going to offer me up a pair of shoes so that I didn't have to travel with them, but I think our foot size is like a half size off. And when it comes to heels, I usually go down a half size anyway, so not sure how that would have worked. But I think we probably would have just explored Dundee a little bit. Um, there's this hill in Dundee called Law Hill and there's this um, like monument at the top of Law Hill that I think has all the name of names of the um, Scottish military men and women who fought in it might have been World War One and World War Two, but that I don't think that's right. I don't remember. Um, it's been a couple years since I've heard the history of that, but it's this gorgeous viewpoint where you can see all of Dundee in um, like a 360 degree view. You can see all the way to the um, to like the River Tay and the bridge across into Fife over there. I don't know what's over there. Um, and then, like, over to Broddy Ferry and, um, behind, which I don't know what's behind Dundee. Um, so that would have been really cool to show Ronnie and Bailey, just get a good, like, view of the city. I don't know if we would have done that today or if we would have done that yesterday. Um, yeah, and then just getting ready and hopping on a train and having a good night out with some friends. So today we are, um dealing with some some springtime weather. It's a little chilly today. It's rainy, a little windy. I think the rain stopped for like this part of the day. It might pick up again this evening. I don't know for sure though. And we are going to Skylar's colleagues. I don't remember what he said they were, whether it's a sibling or an uncle or a what but going um, out to help them with a tree so that Maddie can run around on the property and stuff. So that's our plan today. Um, and then when we get home, it'll probably just be warming ourselves up and relaxing. 
so not not too much going on um but that means i won't really have time for reading or anything which is fine i did um we watched princess mononoke last night and uh after maddie went to bed sky and i stayed up for another like hour hour and a half and um we didn't really want to like watch anything else and Skylar wasn't in the mood to play video games so I continued listening to The Well of Ascension and that's going well. <laughs> uh, I got another good chunk listened to which is good. I'm still loving the world and um, I was watching Becca from Becca and the Books Review because uh, she is part of the Cosmere Read Along so she read The Final Empire, I think for the first time last month, and she described this book as being kind of handholdy, which if you are already kind of into that adult fantasy, it is a little handholdy. But I appreciate it, especially because um, this world is so much different than ours. I appreciate um, being reminded of like what all the metals do and things like that um since there are 10 of them it's hard to keep them all in mind if you don't have them written down and like memorized and stuff which i'm not going to do because i'm just reading a book um so i would say it is handholdy but i appreciate that about it so yeah that's about it um we didn't read any of frozen tides last night i'll probably get a decent chunk in tonight though we'll see but that's where i'm gonna leave this for right now i'm gonna finish up making myself look a little more presentable to meet people i've never met before um so i'm gonna do that and i'll check in with you when i have another update So today may be the last day of the week, but it would not be the last day of the trip. Um, it actually brings us to our last city, though, that we are going to really explore. Where are we in Scotland right now? Um, so today would have been probably a rough morning <laughs> because of a Scottish wedding um, and then waking up the morning next morning up. So, I feel like there would have been a lot of drinking and I already don't drink a lot um, so that would have been fun so it would have kind of been a slow day which is good because we really didn't have a lot planned for this day other than um, taking the train from Dundee to like not the next stop but I think it's the second stopover um, my friend Bailey who's going on the trip it would be her manager's manager had offered to take us around near where he stays um where he lives and there's this town called Falkland and apparently um I think Outlander scenes were filmed there or it was the inspiration for some Outlander settings and things like that so he was gonna just take us around um and things like that maybe he also would have been able to take us out to st andrews uh just so the girls could see what st andrews looks like um last time i was over there he took uh me and bailey's manager and um one of our members from the benelux office which is our um amsterdam offices that's what we call them uh, he took us out to St. Andrews and Anschothers for some fish and chips, which was really, really yummy. So I don't know if we could have fit all of that into today, um, but it would have been a little bit of exploring. It's also on the way to Edinburgh, um, so we would have then just had him take us back to his town so that we could hop on the train um, from wherever that is to Edinburgh and then the Edinburgh is basically where we're gonna spend our last few nights of our trip um, I did kind of rework our schedule a little bit so that 
next year when we land we're gonna stick in edinburgh for like two nights and then the tail the end of our trip is gonna have edinburgh for like two or three nights um so right now we've got a chunk of time in edinburgh but i don't think that's how it's gonna work um next year when we go so yeah and then just uh getting dinner somewhere um walking around just a tad bit hopefully not getting lost finding our airbnb we had an airbnb on the royal mile um so it looked like a really good location just looking at the map it was fairly close to um like grayfers kirkyard and the castle and um not too much of a walking distance from like scott's monument and stuff those are just like the key places that i really know um and can point out that other people might know <laughs> But yeah, so uh, would have been a good day just kind of relaxing a bit and taking it a bit slow. Um, as far as reading goes, I think I'm in chapter like 13 or 14 now of, um, what is this called? The Well of Ascension. So I'm probably a little further than where my bookmark is right now. And I haven't read any of Frozen Tides the past two nights. Um, we watched, instead of watching a movie last night, we watched um, James May's Toy Stories, which is James May from, like, Grand Tour and, uh, oh, what's that other one he did? Um, he's the car guy who goes around with Jeremy and Richard Hammond and stuff. Um, and we just finished Grand Tours, and James May is one of my favorite, not one of my favorite, he is my favorite of the those shows. Um, so we were watching just his TV show that he did back in 2009 about like different toys and getting kids involved in these old toys that he grew up playing with and stuff, so that was fun. Um, and then tonight, basically, uh, well, I started, I actually started The Vegetable Garden today. We also limbed up a tree and um, we'll need to take that to my brother's here in a couple hours. He's not home right now. And then um, basically I'm editing and uploading this video and I have to practice my violin and then the kid wants to play some games. So that's pretty much what our evening's looking like. Um, I'm not gonna be reading uh, since we'll be spending time with him and we've got him for one more night and one more day. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this vlog here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed hearing about what I was supposed to be doing in Scotland this week. It kind of helped um, make it less painful on the heart there for not being there right now. Um, just kind of relive what the plan was and also just get to kind of restructure our trip for next year and hopefully make it a little bit better. Um, we'll see. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Um, and all that good stuff. I'd love to know uh, if you could travel anywhere right now. Obviously, um, we can't, <laughs> but say there were no virus and it's one of your, like obviously I know if you could see anyone right now, it'd probably be family, but like let's dream for a minute. So if you could travel to any of your wish list destinations, I'd really love to know what the top one would be. For me, obviously, it would be Scotland, um, since I'm supposed to be there right now. But, yeah, I'd just really love to know where everybody wants to go, and if you could give a little explanation why, that'd be great as well. Um, I also hope you had a great reading week, and if you care to share what your favorite book was for the week, I'd love to know that as well. And I will just chat with you about travel and books and all other things uh, down in the comments below, and I'll speak with you there until my next video. Bye!